Hello, uh, this is Mr. McMurray again, and we're in chapter 16, and we're radioactive today. Talking about radioactivity. Uh, we want to talk about radioactivity uh, because basically it's one I don't think we understand very well, and uh, a lot of people are scared of radioactivity. We talk about the word radioactivity, and yes, radioactivity and radiation can do damage. Uh, no, it's not only caused by nuclear reactions. It's uh, uh, power plants and nuclear warheads, which obviously are both dangerous, dangerous and can and cause problems. Uh, if uh, a uh, nuclear power plant has a meltdown or something like that, it, Chernobyl and Three Mile Island in the United States and others, uh, the one in Japan that was hit by the tsunami, uh, but kind of overshadows the fact that radioactivity is natural. Radioactivity has been here. Uh, we are exposed to radiation on a daily basis, most of it natural. Uh, we receive radiation from cosmic waves out in outer space. Much of that is blocked out by uh, um, the magnetic field around the Earth and also other layers that help protect us from that radiation, ozone, etc. But there is a lot of radiation that comes from outer space. There's also a lot of what we call background radiation. Um, other parts of the background radiation that's just here all the time uh, comes from natural sources from the Earth. Uh, the volcanic activity is caused by heating from radioactive decay uh, down inside the core of the earth. Hot springs and so forth are heated by uh, this radioactive decay. Uh, so radiation is everywhere. Um, when atoms that have too many protons and neutrons or a t too much a bad combination if you will, they're unstable. Okay, They tend to break down and when they break down some of their mass is literally changed into energy. Uh, can be large amounts of energy or small amounts of energy, just depending how many atoms are breaking down at a time. But if they're unstable, which means they just have a lot of nucleons, the protons and neutrons, and then they break down, they give off radiation. So we say they're radioactive. And when they break down, we say there's radioactivity or they're radioactive decay because very often they break down into smaller atoms. And so they're called decay or breaking down into smaller parts. Okay. Uh, much of this is natural and occurs already. Uh, just however, once again, does it being natural mean that it's safe to be exposed to it? No, it's not. Okay, uh, radon is a source of natural radiation that uh, has been in some building supplies and can cause uh, is dangerous if people are exposed to it. But that's a natural element that is present and has been present and has been releasing radioactivity all the time. Uranium in the Earth's uh, core is what keeps the earth uh, molten on the inside and allows for volcanic activity and and basically uh, without that heated core life on earth would basically uh, be much much different and would eventually probably be extinguished so um, it's not necessarily a bad thing uh, it's well to keep in mind that when cars first came and uh, motorized vehicles gasoline and electric cars first came in and replaced horses they were greatly feared so was electricity uh, radiation also has its own dangers, just like electricity, because a lot of people be electrocuted and other things. But uh, just like everything that has uh, dangers, it also has uh, things that are uh, very useful for it and may be a potential source of energy in the future. So just like everything in the world, there are dangers associated with radiation. We have to decide, are those dangers things that we can overcome? Uh, is it useful, more useful than it is dangerous? Uh, and so on. Okay, And that's just something we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Right now we have fission, or uh, splitting atoms, which was used in the atomic bomb and in the power plants. Uh, possibly in the future we'll have fusion, which is putting atoms, small atoms together to make bigger atoms, and we'll talk more about that later. All right. Uh, basically, when we talk about radiation, though, there's three types of radiation that are giving off by a uh, uh, radioactive substance, okay? And uh, when they first discovered around the uh, 1800s, that first idea of radiation, that things were possibly giving off radiation, um, they knew that it was giving off radiation, but it took a while to separate it. And what they found is if they ran the radiation, so for example, radium was one of the first uh, elements discovered by the Curries, and they discovered radiation, not knowing what radiation was. They both eventually died of radiation poisoning because no one realized how dangerous it exactly was because no one knew exactly what it was. Okay, but as you took a, if they take a block of radium, uh, which is in the inside here, the lead block surrounding it because that blocks 
the radium. Um, lead is very effective at blocking gamma rays and other high energy type of things. All right. As the radiation is released, they found that if they ran it through a magnetic field, it would separate into three different parts. Okay. Uh, the first part was called the alpha particle. The symbol for alpha is the Greek letter A. Look kind of like a fish there. This is a little different one, different font, but basically it has a little look like an A with double tails on it, like that. Okay, and that's the Greek letter alpha. An alpha particle basically is a helium nucleus, okay, and it has two protons and two neutrons. So it has a mass of four AMUs thereabouts, and its charge would be positive. It have a plus two charge. And so it would be repelled by the magnetic field one direction because it had a positive charge. And we know how magnets and electricity interact to repel each other. In this case, there was also given off what we call a beta particle, which basically is an electron. And if you have an electron, it would have a negative one charge, very, very low mass, practically no mass. Okay, we would say very low mass, but it would have a negative one charge because it's an electron. All right, the other thing coming off would be a, a gamma ray. Gamma ray is, remember our electromagnetic spectrum, um, Light rays are very fairly low frequency, then X-rays are higher frequency radiations of electromagnetic radiation. And finally is gamma rays, all right? And they have a very high frequency, the highest frequency we know. It's ultra high frequency. Uh, it's non-visible, but it's like a light ray, just with a higher frequency. Okay, and it has no charge, and it has no mass, because it's actually energy, and it is not actual mass being given off. Okay, so we have the alpha particle, which has a positive two charge. We have the beta particle, which is a negative one charge and very small amount of mass. All right, and gamma rays, which are basically uh, high frequency energy, and they basically uh, have no electric charge. All right, so of these three charges, the alpha radiation, uh, which would be a stream of alpha particles, which are basically uh, a nucleus of a helium atom. Okay, it's just the protons and the neutrons, no electrons, and so it has a positive two charge, and it's fairly easy to shield against. One, because it's fairly large, so it's hard for it to pass through objects, so it's easy to stop it and shield it when it runs into things, um, and also because it's positive, so it makes it easier to uh, deflect or protect things about it uh, from it. Uh, it cannot penetrate, for example, even a piece of paper or clothing, uh, so basically unless it just... Um, hit your surface of your skin, it can't really do much damage, okay? It does have to increase the kinetic energy. It can do damage to the surface of an object if it hits it, but it's not going to pass through the object. It's just going to hit the surface and do damage there. Uh, usually, since it's positive, it just grabs some electrons, all right? And if you have this, which is basically a helium nucleus, and it grabs two electrons, uh, basically it's just going to turn into a neutral helium atom. Now, if this happens in the air, the helium, being a lighter gas, is just going to rise and rise and up to layers, upper layers of the atmosphere and eventually possibly even escape. Uh, however, if it happens to underground, uh, this is where we actually get most of our helium. There's helium stores or underground storage areas having large amounts of helium, and basically because as uranium and other radioactive elements decay, they give off uh, helium nuclei or alpha particles, which join up with electrons and form um, helium gas and since they're trapped underground they can't rise okay uh, they're little pockets and spaces underground where they're trapped uh, this is where we actually get helium from there's some up in the panhandle by Amarillo and uh, some other places but basically we have some of the largest helium stores known but it's primarily done because of natural decay of uranium without that there would practically be no or very little helium and wouldn't have helium balloons and all that kind of good stuff all right, the second type of radiation we'll talk about is beta particles, okay? Beta particles are um, basically a stream of beta particles coming off or electrons. They can move a lot faster because they're smaller than alpha particles. And therefore, it takes something like maybe a thin piece of metal would probably stop it, okay? But if it hit your skin, it could travel into your skin and could harm or kill cells as it hits cells or nuclei inside your cells, all right? Uh, now, once it's stopped, they're basically just electrons. So those electrons become part of whatever the substance they stop in and become part of the atoms in that substance, okay? It basically has a negative one charge. And so, um, uh, basically, uh, it doesn't do any lasting damage. Once It does damage from the speed at which it goes through your skin and it can do damage. But once it stops, it basically 
because it's just an electron and it becomes part of your body and is absorbed. Okay. Uh, now, if you have a neutron, we were talking about protons and neutrons. If you have a neutron, which weighs a little bit more than a proton, if it were to lose or give off an electron, okay, which would be a beta particle, that would what's left would be it would now it lost a negative charge, so that gives it a positive charge, and so now it would become a proton. It weighs a little bit less because the mass of the electron is gone, and it has changed its charge from neutral because it lost a negative and become positive. So basically, when a neutron gives off a beta particle or electron, it becomes a proton. The last type of radiation is given off by radioactive element is gamma rays, usually kind of a curved Y looking symbol, but it's the letter G in uh, Greek. And basically these are the ones that can do the most damage. Okay, if you may remember, these are supposedly the ones that turn Bruce Banner, mob minor scientist, into the Incredible Hulk. Okay, uh, however, it's probably not going to be anything quite so dramatic as that, but these are basically energy. Okay, high frequency energy. Uh, electromagnetic waves or radiation, if you want to call it that, uh, kind of like a light ray, but with much more higher frequency, higher energy, uh, and can do a lot more damage. Since it's energy, it has no mass, nor does it have a charge, but it will be moving at very, very high speeds, and therefore can do lots of damage. It can only be blocked by things like lead, just like x-rays, which are slightly uh, lower on the frequency level, but x-rays and gamma rays can only be blocked by lead and very dense materials like that. Um, X, gamma rays can do damage to your DNA. Okay, so we talk about radiation that causes mutations. Supposedly the Hulk, I guess, was caused by mutations in his cells, but usually those harmful mutations are going to be things that damage uh, the cell and keep it from doing its job, and generally they tend to be harmful. The odds of you're becoming a super-powered superhero are extremely small. Okay, however, it should be most that uh, gamma rays, as well as causing damage and cause cancer, the mutations in there can cause cancer, which cause uh, cells to multiply out of control. Uh, they're also used to kill cells, such as cancer. Okay, uh, and so basically, when you're doing radiation treatments for cancer, the theory is you're going to try to kill all the cancer cells before you do too much damage to the uh, good cells, and that's why there's a lot of serious side effects doing with that. The other use of radiation is to irradiate food. You may have heard vegetables have been irradiated. Basically, that means they have been zapped with the radiation, and it should kill all the bacteria and stuff. Uh, there's some controversy about that, whether you should use those. But basically, keep in mind that this is energy. Once the energy has hit the food or whatever, it does not change it. It's not like, oh, it has gamma radiation still in it. Okay. Uh, once, once it is done and killed the bacteria, there is no deposit of the radiation in it. And so, uh, generally, it should be considered... Uh, harmless in our food. And once that food's been treated with it, we're not going to ingest it or anything. And so uh, it is used to kill the bacteria. It's better than to catch, say, salmonella from uh, spinach and some other things that are very difficult to clean because they're kind of curly and stuff. Uh, so uh, radiation is a way to kill some of those harmful bacteria and so forth. All right, a couple things just show you again. This would be, for example, of a neutron. If it were to lose an electron, an electron comes off of it, or a beta particle, it would become a positive proton. Uh, also, uh, we have talked about um, the different things. Uh, alpha particles could be stopped by paper or a piece of clothing, so not very harmful. Uh, also, turn into harmless helium atoms once they gain some electrons. Beta uh, electrons can travel through uh, paper and clothing and stuff. But so do a little more damage going to your cells. But basically, once they're absorbed, they're just an electron that's absorbed by whatever they go into. And finally, the most dangerous though are gamma radiations of um, energy. They can go deep in and cause genetic damage and so forth that can cause mutations. So we've talked a little bit about environmental radiation. Much of the radiation we're exposed to is just naturally there in the environment. Background radiation, a lot of times we call it because it's just it's always there. And this is what occurs naturally in the air. There's no such thing as a radiation-free area. Uh, natural sources account for about 80% of the radiation we're exposed to. Radiate, radon gas that's released by uranium deposits and has accumulated in some buildings, especially if they're built over areas that have uranium deposits beneath them. Uh, your human body actually releases some. We have potassium in our, our bodies. Okay, uh, And then we'll look at some of the other sources in our next video.